So uh, I know that we were talking the other week about how I was sick. It turns out I was infected with Joker venom from because from reading too many Batman comics. <laughs> <laughs> okay uh did you like the new batman the one with the twilight vampire in it not familiar with that one you haven't seen this one the bat it's a, a edward something or other and 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 i want to say josie and the pussycats but that's not her name uh the, there's a great movie by the way josie and the pussycats <laughs> uh lenny kravitz's daughter plays catwoman i think i don't remember who else was in it but it was pretty good. It was a pretty good. It was really moody. It was like they, I bet you, I, I think the director was like, I listened to the Nirvana Sounds of Teen Spirit album 14 times and then wrote a script. The only thing I have about Batman is the, uh, they need to really expand out some of the bad guys that make it to the mainstream. By the way, one of the worst Batman villains of all time, and you can Google this, is a man named Calendar Man. <laughs> And he's a fat little man with a calendar around his like top hat. And like he's, I have no idea what his powers are. I just know he exists because it was so, like, there was something of like rejected Batman. <laughs> yeah, I think that we need to bring Calendar Man in to the episode where we start talking about time management. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the All Things MSP Podcast. I am your host, Justin Eskar. As always with me is my good friend and podcast producer extraordinaire and the man who makes me laugh probably most often, Mr. Eric Anthony. <laughs> oh, if they only knew how much fun we have outside of what gets published. If we ever make it to being like super famous and we get to do the podcast live in front of people, they're going to really question a lot of things about how this show happens. <laughs> Yes, uh, absolutely. Although that opportunity may come sooner rather than later. Uh, we are hoping to be at IT Nation. Uh, still finalizing some details for that. Not sure exactly how it's going to work yet, but we are working on it and we will want to create any and all content that we can while we're there. All right, Justin, uh, we started last week talking about why MSP should be doing content marketing. What are we going to talk about this week? Well, I figured we try to take over the world. Narf. No, we're going to uh, talk today. We want to talk about how to do this content marketing. So again, all things MSP, we're talking about all things. And we've been kind of focusing a lot lately on marketing because that is the biggest struggle for a lot of MSPs, right? Uh, we understand as MSPs how to fix problems, uh, restart your computer, hang up the phone, press the power button, hang up the phone, how to get from A to B, right? Simple things. But marketing uses that creative part of our brain that sometimes doesn't make sense to us because it's not as logical as it is when we're fixing computers. And again, a lot of us became MSP owners because we were good at computers and therefore we started a business. We never thought about the business aspect. So uh, we started talking a little bit about, you know, why we should be doing marketing. And today, today I wanna, I wanna dive into how to do marketing. And here's the thing, I'm gonna, I'm gonna set up the stage here for Eric. How can someone do content marketing and not spend a lot of money. Now, before anyone decides to comment, well, time is money, shut up. We're talking about actual money. <laughs> yes, time is money, we understand this. We understand there's only so many hours in the day and one day we'll have Calendar Man on from Batman and we'll explain how that works. But right now, your time is the only resource you have to put towards this. And so we want to figure out how you can do things by just using time and not using actual dollars or a lot of actual dollars to spend toward marketing. So we, 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 we dove a little bit into ChatGPT last week. I'm sure we'll hear back about that. But Eric, what, what are we going to do here? Because like uh, we're broke, right? Let's just imagine we're broke. And we need to like, we need to become subject matter, matter experts. We want to get some content out there. What am I supposed to, how do I start? Where's, where's step one, man? Where I need a manual. Okay. Where is one? So first I want to say that you gave me a great segue into this. Um, I just ran across a quote from Guy Kawasaki. Uh, I think it was maybe even yesterday that, and it's about marketing. It says, if you have more money than brains, then do outbound marketing. If you have more brains than money, 
use inbound marketing. And content marketing is inbound marketing. It is attracting clients, prospective clients to call you. So how do we do this? How, how do we start doing content marketing? And of course, how do we do this on, you know, on the cheap? Because uh, we're going to go with the more time than money rather than the more brains than money, because there's things we can do to, to kind of substitute the brain power just a little bit. Uh, doesn't diminish the fact that we're subject matter experts, because that we are. But there's a lot of other creative stuff that sometimes we're not, and we're going to get into that. But anyway, you have to figure out what you're going to write about. Okay, what you're going to create content on. And I think there's three really good answers to that. Number one, and we kind of discussed this last week when we introduced the topic, and that is what are the common problems that your target audience has that you can solve? Okay, so that's the first thing you can create content on. And that should be relatively easy for you because you're an expert on that, right? Otherwise, you wouldn't offer services that solve those problems. Okay. Number two, what are the new things that are going on in their industry that maybe they don't know about yet? Like we have a lot of this going on uh, just in privacy compliance from state to state because we have a lot of new states adopting privacy laws recently that the constituents in those states don't even realize they have to comply with. And in addition to that, you have a lot of neighboring states to states that enacted privacy law that are affected because it typically depends on where the resident lives, not where the business or the transaction takes place. So there's a lot around that that you as a subject matter expert should know, should understand, and can share with your audience. And this is, again, going to position you as an expert you know, in their eyes, and it's going to make you the first person that they call, right? So that was the second one. The third one is, is there any social proof trending? Is there anything in their industry that's trending right now? And the reason why we want to look at this, it's kind of a little hokey, but this is the way the world works now. Virality is a thing, okay? So if you can ride the wave of two-factor authentication, or the MGM breach, something like that, you know, that's something that you can create content about. I just, I released a video, what was it, yesterday, the day before, on uh, what you guys think about uh, authenticating end users when they call your help desk, right? Because this is, you know, how the MGM breach happened, right? They got a help desk agent to do something they shouldn't have done. And so my question to you guys is, what do you do to authenticate those users to make sure you're not doing something on behalf of a threat actor, right? That's a great example of watching those things that are trending and, and creating content that match those topics so that you can kind of ride that wave of whatever's going on in the industry right now. So those are my three favorite sources. You could probably do some keyword searches and, and find some other topics that might be relevant. Uh, in last week's episode, Justin brought up ChatGPT and said, give me 10 topics on cybersecurity that I can talk about to small businesses. Boom, right? And you don't have to use all 10. Use the ones that you know you think are relevant. Um, actually, Justin, you want, you want to do another ChatGPT one real quick? Yeah, man. What, what, do, what uh, do you think we could, what's another topic that we could give them and, or give chat GPT to, to spit out some topics today? Well, so, so for this one, what I wanted to do is I wanted to come up with ha more hows, right? Uh, okay. And, and these, I, I, what I didn't, I'm going to, I'm going to modify my search in a second, but um, I, I said, you work for a computer service company as its head of marketing. What are the top 10 ways you would reach out to customers to purchase IT services? And what I should have done, and I'm going to edit this right now. To, uh, I'm going to say uh, that don't cost a lot of money, okay? Because um, I wanted to generate a different a different solution. Because I, I know we talked about you know being on the cheap. And some of the answers that it gave could potentially get um, costly. So here's here's the top 10 before I said cheap. Right, I, uh, website optimization, which we'll get into in a second. Content marketing, which is exactly what we're talking about. 
social media engagement, email marketing, pay-per-click advertising, that's where it gets costly, networking partnerships, client testimonials and case studies, also not that expensive, webinar and workshops, online reviews and reputation, and targeted direct marketing. Actually, all those are pretty cheap. I, I just wanted to throw in the cheap thing just to see what it, any difference is. And it came out with optimize your online presence, which is SEO, leveraging social media, email marketing, content marketing, local SEO, networking, referral programs, free workshops and webinars, leveraging customer testimonials and DIY marketing. So actually it came out with the same, the same 10, right? So that means that the top 10 ways a chat GBT answer of a marketer would do things are these. So let's talk about these for a second. Uh, website optimization, SEO. You should be optimizing your website regularly right yep. because there are things that are coming up in the day and the in the news there are changes in your thing if you still have on your website we take care of windows 98 you're going to fail right fair uh content marketing that's kind of what we're talking about here come up with these ideas have chat gbt come up with 10 blog posts write them make them evergreen which means they will last forever they're not about a specific topic. That's a, you. A, the uh, a article about the MGM breach is not going to be evergreen by nature. You could make right. it that way and refer to it, but it won't be on its own. And that's why a blog tied to your website is a good idea for the non evergreen content. Right. Uh, social media engagement. Engage with the social media engagement. So here's the funny thing about social media engagement, and I know that it's. It, it's ironic because we're at facebook.com slash group slash all things MSP. Engaging on uh, social media only works if you're engaging with the right audience. So unless you, unless your customer profile, your target market, your avatar is teenagers, TikTok is not where it's at, right? Um, if your target market is business professionals, LinkedIn is where it's at. If your target market is uh, people who don't know how to use Facebook, Facebook is where it's at, right? Um, so figure out where they are and engage. You don't need to do you don't need to do what Gary Vaynerchuk says and be on every platform all the time. Uh, email marketing, we've talked about this. Have a list, curate that list, clean that list, email that list. Pay-per-click advertising, I would say most of you, most MSP should not do that right away because that could lead to a lot of trouble if you're not sure how to properly handle both Google's insane interface and also what to do with those incoming leads. So let's skip that one. Uh, networking partnerships, uh, join your chamber of commerce, join a BNI group, join every networking group you can find. This one's big. Client testimonials and case studies. Yeah. Now this kind of this one kind of leverages uh for us a little bit because as an Apple consultant and being a member of the Apple Consultants Network, Apple kicks you to the consultants locator. And on there, we have clients who leave reviews for us. So a review on our Apple Consultants Locator listing carries a lot of weight. Right. Toward how good of a business we are. And that has actually gotten us 95% of our business. Um, and that material that they write there, you should be putting on your website as well. Yeah. Uh, and webinars and workshops. You know what? I heard a great story. I think I told this in the last call uh, or like two episodes ago where this guy did a, a, he did a workshop. He did a murder mystery party. Uh, for a bunch of CEOs. And instead of it being a murder mystery party, he made it an incident response party. And he had the CEOs go through, you know, what it would be like if the formed company of all of them was breached and what they would do. And he walked away with 43 new leads and he generated $123,000 a month in recurring <laughs> revenue. That right? is actually a brilliant idea. I don't know how we did it, and I yeah. want to repeat it, but uh, yeah. Uh, online reviews and reputation management, we've kind of the same as the testimonials. And targeted direct marketing, 
uh, direct mail can get expensive, so I would skip that one. But I mean, these are these are all pretty solid. I do like in the cheap version, the targeted direct marketing became DIY marketing materials. Create materials such as brochures and hand them out to local businesses, community centers, and events by hand. But sure, here's the thing, though. You have to have content first. And that's why I wanted to talk about yeah. content today, yeah. because you have to have content for those things. The only one that's the exception to that is the customer stories and testimonials, which is content, by the way. Yeah. Um, I was kind of assuming with my top three sources that you didn't have that many customers that would do testimonials yet. But if you do, we're probably going to do a whole nother session on referrals and testimonials. Uh, and, and we'll talk more about that then. Uh, in the last couple of minutes, I do want to cover a few more things, though. Number one, you should take every single one of these content ideas and create text, audio, images, and video. Text, obvious, you can type it up, you can post it anywhere. Audio, you need to start a podcast. At some point, when we perfect this thing, which will be never, uh, but anyway, uh, we can give you some tips. It's not that hard to start a podcast. And by the way, it's that much easier to be recording it on video while you're recording the audio so that you can release it in video format as well. Um, and we're we're learning stuff. Like I started using, there's a an AI tool and the name is escaping me at the moment, but it allows us to take the entire podcast and it chops it up into segments and creates little vertical social media videos out of it. And it's like $115 a year. Yeah. Like that's nothing. Now, what I have figured out is we need to not take this video that you guys are seeing on the podcast, but take the two separate recordings. Because my name gets cut off. It says, it says, well, yeah. <laughs> so that's the main problem, right? Is there's text that gets cut off and it just looks weird with the borders and the background and stuff. But what I've learned is take the two individual recordings of just Justin and I slam those together side by side and then submit that to the AI and it is produces much better results. And you guys will probably see those results uh, in, in the next week or so uh, after this recording. So create different types of content that you can post all over the place, right? And yeah. you're going to be posting this to social media. You're going to be posting it to YouTube, TikTok, if it's applicable, right? Like if, if you're, if your audience is watching TikTok, which it's almost hard to say that nobody's watching TikTok these days. Yeah. I personally don't like it, but that's, that's just I me. I love TikTok. <laughs> so see, you should not have excluded TikTok because you watch TikTok. I'll tell you this much. This, I, I only know this because my wife happens to be in marketing. The TikTok search algorithm is damn well near perfect. Right. I'll leave it there. We'll talk so, about that. In. Uh, it's because they have a lot of, you know, people working on it. Um, but the last thing I want to talk about is I want to talk about process because process is one of the things that helps you take all of that content, split it up and present it in different ways in different places. Uh, yeah. I use buffer personally uh, as part of my process because it does two things for me. It allows me to schedule posts across multiple platforms at once. That's not cheap, but I'm operating in a place where I have a little bit of money to do that and I have less time. You can okay. use oh, Buffer. Buffer's cheapest plan is like $10 a month. and It, will it is, but it, it's in priced per channel. So it, it... Yeah, but you could post with Buffer. I think you could do up to three channels for that $10 one. Yeah, I think you're right. But yeah. so it's not expensive, but it there is a cost to it, right? Sure. Canva, okay? You don't need anything else to produce your images and your video than Canva. You can do all the editing you need to do in Canva. You can do your voiceovers. You can do uh, the recording of your face uh, on Canva. And it, it just works. Yeah. So um, I know there's a lot to this. If you have more questions, reach out to us in the group. We'll be more than happy to, to answer the questions. Because I know, Justin, that we are again out of time. Why do we keep doing that to ourselves? We keep running out of time. Do you know why? Because we want you to listen. We want we want to leave you hanging, wanting more. Um, look, it, it comes down to this. 
if you're not doing any marketing, start. If you're doing some marketing, do more. And if you're doing a lot of marketing, if it's not working, rethink the entire plan because you need to do something better. In any of those three cases, if you want help with your marketing, reach out to Eric or I, uh, tag us, DM us on Facebook, hit us up in the post, hit us up in the group, facebook.com slash groups slash all things MSP. Um, and look, we're always around. Like Eric welcomes all the new members every week and I try to write something funny uh, underneath them, which by the way, if no one catches on, welcome, welcome, welcome is totally sold from John Oliver. Um, but you know, hit us up and let us let us see what we can do to help you. That's what we're here for. That's what this whole thing is about. We're here to help. We want to see you grow. We want to see you succeed. So do a little bit of marketing. Play with ChatGPT. Play with Canva. Get some ideas. Don't be the one who's not doing anything because the people who do nothing will fail. If you do nothing, you will fail. There is no if, ands, or buts about that. That's it for us today. Uh, Go to facebook.com slash group slash all things MSP, youtube.com slash at all things MSP, all things MSP on all of your favorite podcast apps, which is weird because you're probably listening to this on a podcast app, but find us on the other ones. Don't forget to like, subscribe, leave a comment, let us know whether you love us or you hate us, read the show notes, send us a nice, send us a nice card. Eric's got a PO box that you can send us gifts to. Uh, do all those things. We love, we love to hear from you. We love you all. Promise we'll do better next time. That's it for us. Bye. All right. I really got to run. Okay. I'll talk, talk to you later. later. See you later. Bye bye. From your host, Justin Escar, and myself, thank you for listening to the All Things MSP podcast. Join the All Things MSP Facebook group or follow us on LinkedIn, Instagram, and YouTube. The All Things MSP podcast is a BizPow LLC production. And even though we drink a lot of it, this podcast is still not sponsored by Liquid Death. And now that you've watched that mess of a podcast, don't forget to watch one of these and go ahead and click that subscribe button so you get to watch more. Yeah, just go ahead and do it. Click the button and then watch one of the other videos. I'm watching.